did last year. Introduce yourself for last week. I like that. You that like that? I like that. Charles Randy Sneed. Dylan Colburn. Dustin Johnson. George Nall. Suzanne Umbaugh. Derek Jones. Lisa Mulaney. Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I should have done that. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Here is the 4-18-2018 Raider session. Saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Witness. Citizens input. John. John T. John Vanderbilt. John G. Vanderbilt. <laughs> yeah, make sure. I, I just want to take a second. And a lot, I know a lot of you guys know everything that's going on, but I think it's just important that we we highlight some of the salient points that are going on in Argus right now, because there's a lot of stuff going on in Argus right now. The manufacturing center looks wonderful. It'll look better when it's full. It's nearing completion, but it's exciting to drive by there and see that endeavor. It's been a long road, right? But it's nice. It's coming together, guys. It looks really good. The Argus Community <coughs> Developmental Corporation, which I'm part of, the ACDC, is meeting monthly, at least monthly, we got a lot on our tables at every meeting. We're actually working on a plan to give you guys at least quarterly updates. But preparing the uh, Colonial State Subdivision for additional housing is on our top priority right now. On the back burner, we're also working on uh, a plan to Argus first, uh, be similar to what we call Christmas in April, where homeowners can apply and maybe get some uh, financial aid and help to restore, paint, roof, do those sorts of things. So we're working on a plan to come up with that. Um, and it's, it's in uh, full, full swing and it's going really well. We're also looking long term into the future in terms of housing, helping with industry, all sorts of things within the community. So the development of the corporations in full swing. I wanted to let you guys know that. Artist Task Force, which Dylan is actively involved in, is meeting bi-weekly a lot of stuff going on in those meetings. I like to call that our brainstorming meetings. A lot of big idea stuff going on from town of Argus. Great stuff. Dylan just set up a nice Facebook page. You all need to like it and get on that page to see what's going on in the community. You're going to hear more about this later, but the Marshall County Crossroads Stellar designation is in full swing and Argus is putting together and doing our part uh, for the county in terms of that process. Very exciting time for Argus and, and the entire county. Um, lastly, I don't know if you guys know this, but RTC4, Channel 4, on the web, uh, Steve Stricker runs it, does a lot of the uh, sports events at the school, but he's been involved and wants to be more involved in community activities and events. So we made him aware of some of the activities that are going to be coming up, primarily the Argus Summer Kickoff Festival, which Leads me to my last three or four points here. June 22nd and 23rd, very exciting time, Argus Summer Kickoff Festival. A lot of activities for the kids, a lot of entertainment, craft vendors, food vendors, a lot of people working very hard on putting this festival together. We anticipate another large increase in growth for the Summer Festival. The Marshall County Historical Society is putting together a history of Argus, which will be on display in one of the pavilions to the park throughout the festival. 
and it'll be the best fireworks this side of the Mississippi. Guaranteed. Thank you, Mark. July 21st. I just want to highlight July 21st. So Todd Vanderweel invites soccer teams from all over the area to come in and scrimmage one another um, on, on a Saturday. I, I was involved with this event last year. This is a huge event for Argus because there are, Dylan, do you have any idea? There are hundreds of people. Hundreds of people. There could be 40 soccer teams. I believe we ran the subway out of food last year for that particular day, and they told me the line at McDonald's was out the door. They were almost wrapped around. It's a big event, it really is. And Todd's got that planned for July 21st. I just wanted to highlight that. It takes place in the park and the school. All the soccer fields around here are jam-packed from 9 a.m. until 6 or 7 p.m. in the evening. Soccer all day long. Um, and then lastly, I just want to highlight July the 29th, Marshall County Historical Society is putting together a wonderful event for Argus to honor William Foker, the, the stonemason who built many of the homes here in the area. He has a very distinctive style. So we are putting together the William Foker Festival. It'll be on July the 29th. We're going to be offering a tour um, where homeowners are being contacted. We're getting permission, um, but we'll be touring several houses in Argus. It's over a dozen. I, I don't know the exact number. We're still working on all this. We will be visiting his grave, start, grave site out at the Maple Grove Cemetery, which is the only large big rock, I believe, in the cemetery as a headstone. And then um, lastly, we're going to finish up the Isaac Walton. Because he was at the end of uh, his rock laying career, but as history tells us, he was the idea behind the event, and he was training many of his um, young masons at that time how to lay stone, and that's what they did at the Isaac Vault, and that's how that was built. There's no better time to live in Argus right now. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of great stuff going on. And uh, I think there's a lot of great people working on many different things, and I just want to highlight um, some of the activities going on and some of the planning that's taking place for this community. So, thank you all very much. Okay, let's go home. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Yes. I just want to go right along with John. Now, this Saturday, Argus is going to be rolling. The library has their plant and bake sale. The uh, Lions Club is having their porta pit chicken at the bank and out at um, Dollar General. And the um, church out there is having their resale. So there's going to be a lot of people in town. So it's a good good day. The weather's supposed to be excellent, so that'll help. <laughs> and the fireman's fish fry is coming out, too. Yeah, they're He Thank mentioned you. that last week. Yeah. All right, anyone else with citizens that book? Well, thanks, everybody. Can you get bathroom? If you'd like, just, uh, I, we can get together and I can give you my email afterwards so I can help push these events out oh. um, and stuff like that. So I can draw more okay. okay. You don't want me to ask about that? <laughs> Bathrooms at Memorial Park, can I add? <laughs> Mark, do you have a report for <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to hand this out. I think that the main thing to focus on here was there was uh, four proposals, requests that were submitted to NCEDC from corporations. We never find out who they are until site tours. And one site tour. The rest of it is Thank you. <laughs> Toto, that's a down body. Not, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I had no idea that was, we had a toe toe here. It's like a lot going on. <coughs> you got to go listen to all that, too? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for doing that for us. Going to old business. Attorney report. <coughs> All right, I got a few things here. First, um, just to let you all know that the fire and EMS, 
agreements have now been signed, returned. Um, so we put that to bed, those things, they renew automatically each year. But uh, we're good to go with that. I'll save the manufacturing center, those things for last, but George alerted me to an issue that uh, a lady by the name of Mary Dykert passed away this week, and her son, I believe it is, tell me if I'm wrong, but her son uh, recalled that there were some liens that were on her property. Uh, we were able to track those liens down. There were liens that were held by the town. Um, I just got copies of those today. Uh, they were recorded back in 1994. Uh, One lien was for a grant, uh, the amount of $15,000, and by just the very face of the lien and, and the way that this was drafted, this lien should have been released uh, back in 1999 uh, because of the fact that the property wasn't sold. Uh, she was still alive at that point in time and there was no mortgage foreclosure. So that was a grant and the performance on her end was secured with this lien for $15,000. Uh, but again, this is something that should have been released back in 1999. Is that the HUD grant? Because those were repaid. Well, no, hold that's on. Another one. This is the Housing the Rehabilitation same. Program with the Town of Arkansas. And I can get you copies of these. Okay. Um, it's before my time, so I'm really not familiar with what that all entailed. The other lien uh, was to secure repayment of a loan, um, again, from back in 1994. Um, this loan was for $9,823. And this lien was again recorded in 1994. It's still there. Um, I have no idea if this loan has ever been repaid, forgiven. No idea what the status of that is. Um, it strikes in my mind that we had another house in town where this came up, I'm going to say three, four, five years ago. Um, and I, I believe that the town, well, we're obligated to release the one lien, but I also think that we released the other lien. Um, so put that before you, you guys to do what you're inclined to do, or I'll tell you, we at least need to release the one lien, but don't know the status of the other. But Candy's got all those files in the closet. Because yeah. we've had to dig them out. Yeah. Her various other things. I was going to say, because we released the one on Apple Street there a few years ago. It was a forgiveness loan. But the, the lady had passed away, and they were trying to sell a house, and there was a loan, and we forgave that. And the discussion there was, we didn't know we had it anyway. <laughs> There's a lot of those that the town has on grant loans, but most of the people fulfilled them as long as they haven't sold the house, but they couldn't have because it would have been a lien on them and hadn't been repaid back, so. I was thinking about that, and I thought, well, I don't but they were supposed to make monthly repayments. A lot of people did not. They just let it go. They figured the town was never going to go after them, so, you know, they didn't pay it. And so if the property sold, that was the only way that the town would get their money back. There's That's two what things, I was told. And, and there's two things going on here. Keep in mind, a, a grant, when I hear the word grant, I'm thinking free money. Right. It's not a repayment obligation. There may be strings attached to it. In other words, you've got to do A, B, and C. But a grant is free money. You don't have to typically pay that back. A loan, on the other hand, is you got to pay that back. Um, one is clearly identified as a grant. One is clearly identified as a loan. For one firm. Most of the loans were, and, and that's it, we got to find the paperwork to make sure it's 100% true, but we're if you stayed in that property for X amount of years, there was no repayment. Because it was HUD money that right. we dispersed. I thought that they had to pay so much of it back I, yeah. Oops, sorry. per month. You know, and got a low I, mean, I never, in the 12 years, I don't know if Mark ever saw it even before that, I've never seen a repayment at home, ever. <coughs> no, I was on. And the only way you know it is if somebody went to sell if we've never had that come up to us as a lien, so obviously they were released. Well, we've had a couple come up. You but, know, but, I mean, that yeah. we're aware of. But. Anyway, uh, her son wants to get this cleared up as soon as possible, so that's why I had Barry look it up. 
And yes, they are related to me, so I have to throw that out there, but I will still vote. <laughs> So what do you guys want to do with this? I mean, the one we have to release, it should have been released. Yeah. Yeah. I'd just like to know more history of it. It's just hard making a mm -hmm. good decision cold. Well, that's fine, but like you said, we do need to, the one that should be released. So the only one with, with anything possibly payback is the loan. That's only the other one is definitely a group of grants. It's it's unless there were, like you said less strings are attached or something. Well can, it, is there any way we could find out on that? On or? the face of the lien it, it identifies that if uh, there would have to be some kind of a repayment if there was a conveyance of the property by deed, land contract, or otherwise within five years of the date of execution or upon the death of the owner within uh, five, five years. years is or we want to commence in our foreclosure proceedings within five years. So yeah, that, that took care of that. Then. Right. And, and, then, and I understand, guys, that you haven't seen these. I mean, right. I never knew they even existed. I understand that, you know, maybe you want to take a look at them before you do anything, but I'm confident with the grant right. loan or yeah. grant lien, I'm sorry, uh, <coughs> that it needs to go. But I'll make a motion that we release the grant lien. Seconds. There's a motion and a second to release the grant lien against Mary Diaper residents. Any other discussion? All in favor, sleeping by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And if you want to wait and look up the paperwork, it's fine with me. <laughs> but just like I said, we want to realize that we have done it already to the house on Apple Street when um, was that alone? Was that the same situation? Yeah, it was alone. It was actually the people who lived in your house bought the house and moved down there. Mm -hmm. Rented your house. <coughs> Big Michael. Oh, I know that house. Mm -hmm. I feel like sure that the yeah, you should look at it. Session for this. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll send both of those. Have them send it to you and read the paperwork. That paperwork and bring well, not only not only it's this property, but it's the other properties as well. I mean, oh, well, there's the there's going to be yeah, it's, it's, more. It's it's say, there's quite a few of them. Here. Can we just look at a whole bunch of them at one time? And we should probably workshop or something and make a decision. <clears throat> I don't know how many of them are still on lean. I mean, I'd probably have to get somebody to research that. If you're looking for things <coughs> worth of work, that's fine. But, you know, uh, you know I, I'm going to have to send somebody to the courthouse and find out if they're actually lean. I just wait till they come. Well, like you said, you know? I mean, yeah, this is the second one in 15 years, probably, Mark, at least. So I think we'll probably, you know, I'll have a form, in essence, that'll get put together that I think probably just leave with you guys. And if it's a grant, if it's clearly identified as a grant, with your permission, I, I think you could just have the front office release those mm -hmm. as they come come due or as, as it's brought to your attention. Um, the other ones, if you want to look into them on a case basis, um, so be it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, we'll put it like he said, you can make up that form for that as a right with everybody and then, yeah. So he said, can I just I can't, can't wait, can you know it and when it comes in, she can just, and as far as this one, have Candy find the paperwork and mail it to us so we can all look at it and read it over. Yeah. Maybe I can have Candy attend the next meeting and you guys can ask her questions. Because she was here, I was not so. That's fine. I just know that, that right. she knows exactly what happened, which is why she doesn't ever want another unknown answer. <laughs> but, you know. Is there a specific deadline? Is the property owners or anybody asked about that specifically? Is there a deadline? I know to death and, death and the family, just with that specific. No, there's no mortgage on a house, so. Well, no, I mean, like in general, when they're trying to sell the house or anything. No. That they so when they do a title search, is that going to show up? That's when it's going to show up. Yeah, right. right. How so much soon. is it on the floor? 9,098, something like that. Yeah. I think we need to treat things consistently. There are others that are exactly the same situation, mm -hmm. but when you just this person says this, this person says that. It's yeah, I mean, we have a backup paperwork. Right. 
I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm not asking for any special favors on you. $9,823. I know my house was a HUD house. And that's what I call them the, when I bought it. Because the lady that lived there got money from the town to fix, to have the exterior painted and put a new furnace in and stuff like that. When we went to closing, they had to figure out how much of that was repaid to the town. That had to be repaid to the town. So that's what happened at closing when we went but I don't know if she fulfilled the contract or did what she had to do I just know what happened with my own home so and this is all public record all you got to do is call it the recorder's office okay. and they can tell you what's against any house in town it's not like it's private unfortunately but I don't know if that would be. No. That, that no. wouldn't be. The, the bacon would just show the owner and the taxes. Right. Well, sometimes they have liens, but it's yeah, more these, I mean, I'll give you the document numbers, but that's it. He's got a copy of it. Send it. Yeah, it's, it's that's he explained to me. That's the year and the page. So. <laughs> I wonder what that big list of numbers was. Suzanne, I'm going to send it to the base and I'll just fire it off to you, too. Yeah, I'm going to it to you. Okay. Sure. Anything else, Derek? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Um, now, dealing with the manufacturing center, two issues here. The first, um, we have the deed, just got dropped off yesterday. Um, it's ready to be recorded, and it's conveying back to the town lots one and three. So they're retaining lot two, <coughs> as it should be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing recorded, but just want to let you know about that first. That also means that we also had discussion and we executed the first amendment to the lease and we have that document back as well signed by Jerry so that's taken care of regarding the and it's really just the legal description of the ground that's being leased so that it's correctly identified that was the only reason for the amendment and then the other thing was this satisfaction of agreement for the transfer of the real property and this stems back to the agreement that we had I think it was back in May of 2017 um, but that we also said that they could uh, retain the 17.82 acres. Uh, Jerry has now signed that document, and given that the document itself says that they've conveyed the land back to us, we can now sign that agreement. And I know that was sent to you folks by email prior to the last meeting, so I know you've all slept since then, but um, we discussed this at the last meeting, if you recall. So that agreement's ready to get signed if you're planning to do that. have you sign that, George. They didn't do that part for us. All right, next guys, um, tax abatement on the manufacturing center. I know at the last meeting that there was the, the public meeting, if you will, 
um, where Jay kind of presented the application along with the statement of benefits that was these two documents here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then that triggers then basically the town to, to start this process. Um, looking into this, I thought this was going to be a lot simpler than it wound up being, but I did get a resolution put together and I only sent it to you guys this afternoon, so it's entirely possible you've not even had a chance to see it yet or even know that they got sent. Um, the big issue here was that this process is something that should have actually started before the shovel went into the ground in the first place to, to start the actual building of the uh, manufacturing center. Um, but I'll confess, I mean, I wasn't necessarily aware of that. It's not something that we do on a routine basis in terms of starting a new tax abatement process. Um, there is a process called a waiver of non-compliance. In other words, the statute specifically directed exactly this scenario where somebody has started a, prog or a project and they've not yet come before the designating body to ask for their tax abatement. So you'll see language in that resolution that's in paragraph, uh, paragraph 5 that indicates that the town is, is granting a preliminary waiver of non-compliance. And you also have to remember that really what this declaratory resolution here does is it, does, it declares the 17.82 acres and you'll see that it's kind of mapped out on exhibit A there, referred to with the legal description and parcel number. But it's declaring that an economic revitalization area is, is the catchphrase, okay? Once that's done, we need to have a public hearing. And you can see I put that in there for June the 6th. 6th at 7.15 and then after that at our regular meeting on that Wednesday we would then have it's called a confirming resolution so long as that's what the council decides to do and if there's no uh, remonstrance or public opinion against it that sways the council opposite we would have a confirming resolution and then our, our work would be done in terms of creating that economic revitalization area and approving the tax abatement tax abatements only for the building if company ABC buys the building they come in and they want to put in say five million dollars five million dollars worth of equipment they would have to come back in front of the council we would have to do another resolution to confirm or to allow an abatement for anything else other than the building but this abatement stays attached to the land so that the next owner or the new owner if you will would also get the benefits of this abatement it's set up pursuant to the policy that we adopted this is really going to test your memory but this was clear back in november of 2014 when we adopted the property tax abatement program guidelines in other words our, our policy if you will and, and the policy indicates that it's supposed to be a 10-year abatement and it's supposed to be graduated so that in the first year it's 100% abatement, the second year it's 90 and 80% on down the line. So the resolution, I believe, is, is ready to go. It's ready to be acted upon. And again, just so that you're aware, it then sets in motion. We need to have this public hearing. And then I've got to prepare this confirming resolution. That was an Yep. Which one do you want us to vote on? <laughs> resolution. Resolution 2018-1. It's 2018-6, and again, it's, I, I didn't even give that to Lisa because mm -hmm. I just got it done about 4 o'clock. I but, gave it. It's in your drop boxes, and I gave sure. Suzanne it for the I make a motion to accept resolution 2018-6. I'm sorry guys, and I have, uh, I brought copies again because I knew I was getting this thing out late. So if you guys want paper copies to look at. I do. I'll second it. <laughs> Any further discussion on that? <clears throat> if not, uh, there's a motion to accept resolution 2018-6. Favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Does it matter which one gets signed? It's signed. Yeah. 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 Yeah
That's all I have. Make a motion to accept the attorney report. Second. Motion and second to accept the attorney report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I've got to give it to you. Opposed? Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. That's why. Motion carried. Second. 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 Way to go. Keep those in Board openings. Plan commission. Many seats. Many. Four. 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 <laughs> we need four people. We need two the next month. Yes. We found out last meeting, yesterday, last night, that we have five members. We're supposed to have nine. If one member is sick, they cannot have a quorum. So we really need people. Yeah. <laughs> Not the same bunch. I'm sorry, it's just like too much. <laughs> I kept saying out there. Right now I've got like five million things wrong. They don't do much of anything. Val's on there, you'd be all right. Oh, who's on there? Val Harley. Anybody else have any other? Carol wants to be on there. Carol wants to be on <laughs> Carol. So. You're breathing, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got any other old business? New business. Stellar program. Suzanne. But John and I are representing Argus, and we're working to get a committee together. We need a list of projects. We've submitted a list already. This is a great opportunity. Whether we actually make the stellar designation or not, we're learning how to, the process of working together, getting everybody coordinated within the community, and not just Argus, but within the county. We're learning how to work together. It's the county is first, and then we feed into that. But there's a lot of money, opportunities, but it's not just money. There's a lot of working together, a lot of camaraderie, a lot of learning. Jenny Monroe from Culver is leading much of this process. She's been through the stellar process twice, and she knows what she's doing. She's good at this. So she By the way, she made the cookies back here. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm dead with God. Huh? Well, I need them. You need them? <laughs> what would you like to add, John? Because there's a lot more to it. Um, I'm new to the process, right? So I go to the first meeting last, was that last night? Yes. It was last night. This is a great, I don't know how familiar you are with what's trying to be done, but we're trying to organize Marshall County for a stellar designation. And that requires every community within Marshall County to participate to get it done. So the, the stellar committee has representatives from each town on it. And I attended my first meeting last night. It's, it's a very exciting time, not only for Marshall County, but for all the communities within Marshall County. Mm -hmm. So the way I understand it is Marshall County is going to make a proposal <coughs> to designate themselves for stellar, and it's a long process, and they, it's going to require each town to participate from their end to get this done. It's an all-inclusive all in, all on board, everybody participating. Okay, and as as um, Suzanne said, it's it's more than just about money. It's about the designation of all the benefits and things that communities not only get and potentially could get individually, but can get by working together with each other. And let's face it, we're all kind of on the same wavelength in what we want to get done. I mean, there's nuances between Bourbon and Argus and Culver and Plymouth, but at the end of the day, it's about making our communities better, about growing our communities, about offering employment, about revitalizing our downtowns, 
and about making our school systems more stable. That's, that's what this is all about. It's a, it's a community event, that's what I call it, a community process that involves the whole county. So, Suzanne and I are in the process of designating and making a stellar committee for Argus, okay? Um, that will then work individually for our town to feed up into the bigger plan for the county to get this, to get this designation, which is, which is an honor and a, a big asset for everybody, okay? So, as I understand it, we're <clears throat> everything is happening very quickly very quickly we as a county need to develop a marketing plan a video um, a, a, a brochure to get everything together to not only represent the county but everybody that's involved in this process okay so what they're asking is they're asking for each town to commit five thousand dollars to become a part of this process to get this ball rolling and to get this, I'm gonna call it the larger ad campaign in process and moving. And they're working with InFocus, am I correct? Yes, I think so. InFocus will be the primary uh, media experts behind this process, okay? So we're here tonight, but whenever each town is having their council meeting over the rest of this week or the part of next week, they're gonna be asking the same thing from their town councils. So my ask, I guess, today would be a commitment of $5,000 for Argus to be a part of the Marshall County Crossroads stellar process and designation. And this is to be a community-driven, not the government. So the one topic that came up last night was, when's the last time you had done a survey for your town to identify needs? And through that process, we're actually starting a new survey. We had done a survey when we developed our comprehensive plan. Um, but part of the discussion came up is we want all the communities to be together to do similar surveys so that we're all in accordance and working together. So actually, there's going to be a survey coming very soon, um, possibly as early as the first part of next week. And uh, our hopes is it'll be a, an entire online survey that the community can participate in to identify needs, uh, wants, um, goals that they may have for our community. Priorities. Which will, and priorities which will feed up into the entire plan. Questions? Yeah, I right? I mean, I, no, I don't look to, to the Marshall County Auditor, right? No. Uh, um, it's, uh, hi, everybody. I'm Marty Osterbahn. I'm from Culver. And I'm, <laughs> sorry, Marty, I kept looking at you. Sorry. Come on, come on. <laughs> and I'm on the steering committee as well. Um, and so the, I'm not exactly sure. I think we've decided, um, and so the economic development uh, is going to be pitching in. The council, yeah, the Marshall County Council will be pitching in. Um, as well, and I think um, we're going to. It's. Um, I think Kevin Overmeyer is going to designate a fund. It's not going to. We're not going to run it through the economic development commission. No. I think we're going to have a separate fund. And right. so I think that clerk. I think we will go to the Marshall County clerk. For some reason, I, last night I wrote down auditor's office earmarked regional stellar uh, program. Oh, let me get back to you. It was the one. So, so. Okay. Yep. It's the auditor's office. I'm just going to be made up for the regional stellar. <laughs> or Marshall, you can probably put Marshall County Crossroads stellar. Don't Exciting. Find a, don't find a way to cash it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of these deadlines for, you know, when do we need a committee by? Well, I started the committee, we started working on the committee today. Um, so the first tight deadline for the, the uh, stellar committee is going to be May 31st. There will be a meeting at Swan Lake at 9 a.m. And uh, there, we are going to be taking some representatives from each town to attend that meeting. Okay. I'm not sure what's all going to be entailed at that meeting. Um, but we're going to find out more about the process 
and there may be some um, Ball State will be there. Ball State will be conducting the meeting. Um, a couple of things, and I'm going to say this kind of tongue in cheek, but um, forward thinking, um, being together, working together as communities and within a community are so important to this process. Okay. So when we put together the committee, it's got to be very forward thinking. And I can't say that, I'm not saying we don't question each other, because we do. But during the process, I, we need to be very forward thinking and, um, and with eyes on the future about what we want for Marshall County and what we want for this community. Okay. So there's going to be activities, as I understand it, on the 31st. I believe the uh, the whole rollout is going to be in November, if I'm not mistaken. I have to go back and look, think about my notes now. And then there's community input, community committee input, uh, somewhere around that same that same time frame. Okay. So one thing that we would like to do now is commit to the Marshall County program. Let you know that we're going to be creating a artist community Marshall County Stellar Committee. And we're going to be taking results from this survey and implementing a plan for the town of Argus that will feed up into the plan, the overall plan for Marshall County. That's the idea. So there's tight deadlines. I mean, if you're looking at May 31st, and we are going to meet every week. Um, through the month of May to get prepared for the 31st meeting. And days and, and times for that? Are, are they open? Obviously, they're open to the public. But. Um, uh, was it 6 p.m. last night or 5.30? 5.30. 5.30, and we're at the Marshall County building. I'll get in touch with you. Well, the next deadline, then after that, September 21st. And then November. Yeah, yes, September, then November. I'm sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. I just came on to this whole thing last night, so, and I committed last night. It's a it's a wonderful process. It's it can only ben, it can only benefit the county, and it can only benefit this community, in my opinion. And that, and, that, and I say that regardless of whatever happens, whether we get the designation or not. <laughs> The growth process is going to be huge that we go through in attempting to get it. But that doesn't mean if it doesn't happen this year, we can't do it next year. There are six communities and there will be two chosen. But we're already working together through Marshall, through the Swan Lake, the Quarter Lake County Development for the future meetings. So our county already has, we're already coordinating. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you know, I was so impressed last night with Jenny. Um, Kevin Overmeyer is really on board. And my, yes. uh, my understanding, he's one of the guys who's kind of the impetus behind this thing yes. for Marshall County yes. and to get us all involved. And uh, it was really neat for me to sit there last night with, you know, Bremen, Bourbon, um, Culver, all the other communities in Marshall County. And, and everybody's got the same, you know, they can be a little different, right? But everybody, we're all trying to do the same thing. And I think this is a good way to bring all of what our communities need to light and a good way for us to work together. Very positive about this process. Can I add just a couple of things? Because Jen, Suzanne said it so well, but just a couple of maybe a little bit for context is that, um, that the, what we're trying to do is raise a total of $60,000. Um, Marshall County, by becoming a finalist, is already getting $20,000 from the state to, to fund our, you know, our work. And then, so we figured we need forty thousand from there, um, and you know, it's for videos, it's for reaching out, you know, it's for to make that presentation in September, and so we're coming five thousand for each community, and then I think it's ten thousand to the economic development, right? Ten or fifteen for them, and then the balance from like, uh, the county council, and that's how the funding is is being requested. Um, the the end of the month meeting, I believe, is going to we're going to try to get all this data. Uh, from the surveys and see if we can find themes that are common throughout the county to start figuring out where are the projects 
that we're going to eventually be presenting to, um, you know, to Stellar and say, this is what we want to do with the money. And it will be very specific. Um, and it'll probably within, be within some pretty big themes, but, but it's, you know, uh, probably quality of life related and very specific to, you know, areas within um, Marshall County. So it'll be, okay, we want to do this in Argus, you know, it's part of, you know, what, um, you know, part of the, the work, right, if, if we're awarded. Um, so how that all works out, that's, that's why we need to get this initial information in, and then we need to make sure we have a, a robust um, way to get input from all the stakeholders, you know, here in Argus, you know, not just Suzanne and John, but, you know, everybody that's got a, a stake in this town's, you know, quality of life improvement and, and economic development. Because that'll feed where the, you know, what projects get identified and, and you know, where we kind of start focusing on what we're going to pitch to the state. I think, uh, you're right, no matter what happens with this, what we're going to develop, I think, at the county level is a, an increased project management capability that then, regardless of what happens, you will have as a resource to you as you try to work on quality of life projects locally here, you know, how to get money, you know, once you get the money, how to drive it, you know, from there. I think, I think the county is lacking in resources for you to do that kind of work now, and I think we're going to have to build this as part of this project, and it will be there when it's done. And to even add on to that, you know, I'm sitting there last night at this meeting, and I kept thinking, Gee whiz, even, even what we'll get out of it is, I keep thinking of all the salient points that the community wants and needs through the surveys and how they reply to us can be, will be so valuable to you as a council, to the Argus Community Economic Development Committee, to the task force committee, because now you know what the community sees as being very important. And it will help us drive uh, our projects and our goals for what the community really needs. And so I think even if it doesn't happen for us, it's so valuable. And then, and then you think larger on a county scale, it, it does the same exact thing. The county then needs, sees the needs and, and uh, the wants of the people in the county and maybe how to identify things that will better help them. And I'm sorry, I did, it, so the, it's $60,000. Marsh County Economic Development is kicking in twenty. Some, uh, what would you say? Somebody else was. I think, well, the state gives us the twenty for being 20. a finalist, so we got to find forty from there. And I think it's five thousand for five towns is twenty five, and then the other fifteen comes between Marshall County Council and <coughs> economic economic development. Development. Yeah. So that's how the sixty thousand is coming together. For the so every town is asking for five, and then we get twenty from the state, and then economic development. <coughs> So that's my ask for being here today. If you have any more questions, I will attempt to answer them, but I'm new to the process. Um, I missed the trip when they took to Indianapolis. I wish I would have been on that trip. But Suzanne may be able to answer those questions. Um, and we're in the infancy of creating a, uh, I'm going to call it the Marshall County, the Argus Marshall County Stellar Committee for our town. So that we can start organizing and getting ready and doing our part to feed up into the county plan. And we need to reach out to people and explain it to them and get them excited about the whole process. That's one thing that Culver did. The people were excited. They knew what was going on and they were buying in. We need to have our community buy into this. And we may be talking to the firemen, perhaps have a table or something like there on the 12th to help inform people and maybe if we have that survey right then have a computer for people survey if that's and I, I, just, I want to add this too so what I ask our school superintendent to be available to go May 31st and he has agreed to help so I got that commitment from him today which I thought was a big commitment because he's moving around so he's on board with us now also <clears throat> thank you good deal and these cookies are unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them over here. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you eat all you want. <laughs> okay. Can you say you made them? Uh, uh, no. Um, uh, so Ginny, Ginny Monroe made them. Uh, brought them to the meeting last night, and then they were left over. 
And I said, well, I'll bring them here tonight as kind of a bribe. <laughs> for the, for the <laughs> or, or at least to get you to consider the funny. I think it's bribes a bad word. <laughs> You didn't write that down. Okay. I did. I, okay. Yeah, but, oh, okay. oh, yeah. I can get this water. Yeah. Oh, thanks, too. Uh, you had two earlier. One at a time. Okay, so I guess they're looking for a uh, commitment of $5,000 from the community. It doesn't mean it has to be paid this second, but it's a commitment that we will. What you're asking for. Yeah. Yeah. And I will be, I will get the specific about the payment and stuff and get it to you, Lisa. I'll make a motion to we make the commitment for the $5,000 for the Delaware community. Second. Right. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, I'll signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. There you go. Again. Thank you, John. Thank you. Ed. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity here. Just the reason I'm here is um, there was some discussion, as we all know, years has been going on for years when the old Speedway building was standing. Um, obviously, we know the town had attempted to purchase that property, which never happened. The building has since been removed. Uh, even though the building has been removed, all that we are left with now is a very unsightly piece of property. Um, there's a big for sale sign in the front of it, uh, and it's, it looks like sometimes it's become the, the attraction of a Dimmit salvage yard north. But anyway, with that being said, as, as some of you may know or, or may recall, the town purchased two lots directly to the east of that property from uh, the Dimmit family. Um, and obviously still owns those two pieces of property as well as the property between the old speedway up into the old hospital. The town owns that parking lot and then the lot and then again south of there. What was discussed um, amongst the, the park board and some members of the community, they, obviously we've heard a lot of grumbling wanting something done with that. Um, because of the fact of the way it does look. It's, it's in the middle of our downtown. It's one of the first things when you stop in town, that's the first thing you see is that big vacant, vacant lot. <clears throat> with that being said, discussion was held uh, with the park board in our last park board meeting. I brought it up and asked if the park board was interested in approaching the town to see if the town would be interested in deeding the at this point, the two lots directly to the east of that property to the park department for the uh, the purpose of pursuing some type of, of uh, renovation or development of that piece of property on behalf of the park department. We would assume, you know, whatever whatever the task is, we would take that on. Um, it's something that, that I feel very strongly about as well as, as far as the, the downtown appearance. With that being said, the park board agreed that they would like that the town would so see fit to, to deed us those two lots in the beginning and then we would pursue and begin some type of negotiations with the uh, speedway and then um, whatever processes may be necessary after that, if that should fail, then attempt to as well but um, again I'm here to ask for that initially now keep in mind that um, eventually I may come back to you if we do end up getting those two lots and pursuing and obtaining that lot I may come back to you and say now the park would like the lots to the south of that as well so at some point it may be us asking for that whole area for some type of, of um, I don't know, revitalization so to speak but my main purpose tonight is to ask if the council would consider and or um, deed those two lots over to the park farm so we can begin our process to at least try to obtain and enter into some type of negotiations on that piece of property. You've got to take the one on the west or on the north side too. <laughs> no. You know what property they're talking about there, Dylan? Do? Yeah. 
Does everybody know what property we're talking about? Yeah. How quick would you <laughs> go to do Because that and our part of the property looks bad too, especially well, exactly. the end. Of as soon as soon as if the council so sees fit to to deed those to us, as soon as that process is completed, or even as soon as we we get to go ahead, I am within the next. 30 days we'll start with with some type of correspondence with the <coughs> owners of speedway uh, obviously my ultimate goal is to see if they would want to donate it to the park department rather than even though the park department is still the town i mean i think maybe they they may have a different um a feeling about yeah, giving it to a park than to to the town or at least working something out with us if not then obviously i'll get with derek and see if there's other options to to research and pursue on behalf of the park department Oh, she says. <laughs> yeah. the, there, and I, I, I just, I'll just leave it at that for right now in the meeting. Maybe just sitting there. All right, they're empty for how long? I don't have a problem with it all. Let them, let them pass. Let somebody at least do something, get something started, because it's just keeps sitting there. Yeah, I agree. I think we should uh, make a motion that we do the two lots uh, on the. East side of the speedway to uh, the uh, artist park department. Second. Yes. Our motion and second to be the old dinner property east of the speedway property. And the parks department. Any other discussion? <laughs> Favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Real quick on another another point, we were talking about funding and grant opportunities. I did receive from Lisa and Jamie and Todd and somebody else, but um, the the park department because we do have a, a five year master plan that is current and was approved by the state. Um, we are eligible to apply for a land and water conservation fund grant. I did speak with Howard. The deadline for that grant at this round is June 1st. We were just notified that we were eligible for it. But um, I did speak with Pat Brown via email. Um, and Pat says it would be a little difficult to try to put something together now. But if there are there are basically points that are, that are assigned for different things that you want to do, and obviously the more, the more points you get, the greater chances are of getting it. Um, so what I had asked Pat to do is he's going to come to the park board in October and November to begin some type of um, discussions as to what we would like to see done in the parks and then try to put together a grant application that would get us the most points for whatever we would want to do. At this point, it's not feasible for us to, to pursue that, however, in the, the near future it will be. Thank you. All right, anything else on that? Thanks, Ed. Not resolution 2018-4 additional appropriation. Yeah, that in front of you, I believe. Yep. Yeah. Last meeting, we um, transferred the $200,000 from the electric cash reserves to the general fund. This meeting is to have the um, to sign resolution for the additional appropriation. Make a motion we pass resolution 2018-4. Second. Motion and second to approve the additional appropriation of resolution 2018-4. Favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Well, task force, I think we pretty much got uh, just uh, what did I skip? Township agreement. Well, I was yeah. trying to get by. Oh, God. Um, I was approached by Stim Stimson and Stimson Bowman to approve the um, Department of Public Works Grant the township, the trustee office from us through the VNR building 
Um, he did notice that there was a discrepancy in the street address on the old contract, and that happened when we renumbered all the apartments and everything that was uptown um, when they went from just being apartment A and B to actual numbers. So that needs to be redone, and he was just asking that maybe we wanted to revisit this um, to see if there's anything that you want to change since we should probably change the address. Complex lease. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, it needs to be updated. Anyway. Some of the and he, right now, he pays the $600 or $1,200, um, two installments of $600, which is $1,200. He does help the community and stuff like that. So that is, he just brought it to me and said we need to rewrite this for the correct address he felt and maybe if you wanted anything else changed. If you don't, we'll just correct the address and I'll bring the correct copy to the next meeting. You mean like bump it $100 a month and they can pay your bills? I did not say that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I did not say that. I just, I, you know, and... It well, you said it wasn't complicated. It doesn't hurt to bring these things to up every... Right. I mean, this is a lease from 2002. You, you've probably never seen it, so it doesn't hurt to bring it forward and, re, you know, just make, revise it every once in a while. Fun bug says, worried about property upkeep and liability. Is that something you wanted to add? Yes, he did. Um, he wanted to make sure that, um, well, he wanted me to ask Derek, actually, about wording about the property upkeep and the liability if he should add something like that because his insurance agent took a look at this lease and did not like it. So, you know, but, um, so I don't know if that's something that you think should be added in or, those are the two things, change the address and the wording about the property upkeep and liability. Well, what's the situation with the liability? Um, there's no, there's no definite on who's responsible for anything in this. I mean, it's like two paragraphs. It's so, one full paragraph. Um, What's the arrangement, though, man? In terms of, does he have liability? We always covers his operations while he's using it. That's typically what you have a tenant do. Yeah, um, and he's not against that. He does have some insurables, but it's not spelled out in here. No. You know, and so he would. His insurance agent would like it spelled out. Um, you well, know what? Well, before I go creating some addition of new responsibilities on him, I guess. So what is he? Well, we've always we've always done the maintenance on the building, so the town has always done all of the maintenance on the property. And I guess he's just wondering if somebody comes to see him at that property, are we liable or is he? And we'll probably all get sued, but I'm just saying, you know. Because sometimes he does, you know, if he has multiple appointments in one evening, he will have one appointment in his office, but he has access to the BNR building, and he might put them out in the yeah. BNR like a waiting room, you know. So. And he is. Leave it to insurance and lawyers. Always, oh, man. <laughs> I didn't bring this up. Sharks. Yeah. This, this. But he, he did say that maybe you know we might want to re revise the lease to change the address and add some wording about who's responsible for what. Yeah, I mean, and I no problem doing that. Again, I just I don't want to treat more than is necessary, but I also want to make sure that. We pay all the we, utilities. And I got that, but I'm just saying typically a tenant takes care of their own liability insurance. That's their obligation. The landlord takes care of the fire and casualty insurance. That's their obligation. Um, and and you, you want to have liability anyway. Right. So does that need to be stated maybe on the other one yeah. so that his insurance company can see his action too? Well, I get it. Well, I mean, you, obviously, just like Derek said, I mean, <coughs> 
the town wouldn't want to accept responsibility for his his personal property inside. Right. I mean, that would be his. Maybe something that should be spelled out. The liability. I mean, from from the insurance standpoint. I mean, I would say, as, as Derek said, you know, if there's something that is spelled out that the town's responsible for, <laughs> and someone is injured because of that, then obviously that's where your insurance would, would kick in. But if it, if somebody's inside his office and trips over his chair, you know, and hurts himself, it's nothing the town did. But if you don't have it spelled out, I mean, where does it go? They're going to sue us all anyways. I just think that what Steve is looking for is a revamp of the lease with some modern wording of sure. that. Yeah. So you, want, you want a motion so, to revamp the lease? Yeah, okay. motion or do you want to just you guys want me to do it, but I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying anything until you approve it. So I'll update it and send the copy to us. I'll make a motion. Will you revamp the lease? Have Derek revamp the lease? Yeah, we should. All that trustee. I'll second. Motion second to redo the lease. Have Derek look at it. All that township? Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Task Force and Council Liaison Reports. Do you have anything else on the task force? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did most of it. I did talk to another marketing person last week and I was very impressed and very reasonable. I think she would be really good to work with. Sixty-five dollars an hour for marketing, but we can set our own prices. I mean, like five hundred this month, or whatever, or a specific project. Not just a big lump sum. Right. Right. So you realize that the town, that's okay. Then the task force might do that. That's right. I mean, it's kind of a the task force is how do we want, how do we want to say what they're the uh, lead on this force. Or what you want to use that word? We have no official capacity. We're a think tank. Her it's like home. We think of the word. We're Suzanne's yeah. minions. <laughs> <We're laughs> <We're laughs> Suzanne's minions. <laughs> oh. I'm kidding. I also I'm going to follow up a big idea tomorrow because they have not called me back yet. I knew they had because I had called them about working on a deal. All branding. Right for the branding and. Because my thought was to incorporate part of what is sung and done, what is said and done in our video, which was done so eloquently, and incorporating that into our branding somehow. And they made the video. So I, I extended an invitation to them, and I'm waiting to hear back from them. And at our next meeting, away from tonight, our goal is to put together a packet with a letter of invitation for people to get engaged with the community, to take part, to sit on the different committees and boards. Hopefully we can get the plan commission filled or at least a little closer. But to challenge them. You know, what have you done for your community? What have you given back? But we're going to be working through the wording for a letter and I think it would be good if we had a list of the different boards and committees and what requirements I know to that people are going to use. I know you'd have it someplace. Yeah. Yeah. But if we could put that in the packet, then people could see what there is. And we can try and get that out into the community. I mean, we could simplify it a little bit because some of it is, nobody knows what a home is there. Right, well, we can refine it. But that is one of our objectives for the next meeting. <coughs> Uh, and Suzanne, to to comment on your uh, marketing, keep in mind and remember we still have the, the money from the, the yes. community foundation or the uh, tourism, I'm Tour sorry, tourism, tourism for uh, for that marketing as well. So and as long as we target out there, they want us to target outside of the county. Mm -hmm. As long as we can, can utilize some of that money, as well, if not all. Well, as we sat talking, she was brainstorming and tossing out ideas as we talked. No, that's what we need. Yes. We need so, I mean, she, her mind was clicking and she had some very good ideas. And I liked her price. Yes. And we can take it one step at a time. We just want to do one month, see how it goes. That's fine. We don't go any further. So, we can go as far as however we choose with her. 
in my in my mind, in my opinion, identifying a brand for the community is our next big step. I mean, Ooh, wow. really, to make anything else go forward, in my mind, is we've got to figure out what we want our brand to be. And that's why this is so critically important with getting the right marketing slash media folks involved to help develop that. This is very helpful in the community. I mean, we, we can sit up here as a council and say, we're the, we're the legal end of it and uh, you know, kind of where it eventually goes. But the committees that are out there, the volunteers, are bringing all of this to us. It's a big help because, <clears throat> as you already know, there's not enough hours in a day, not enough nights in a week to go to every meeting and half of the people in here go to at least two-thirds of the meeting and uh, it's, it's very appreciative even if sometimes it doesn't seem that way I mean for me anyway yeah, well, we talked about making a brochure and you know, my thought is why make a brochure if we don't know who we are I mean because the brochure should identify who we are that's the whole point of making the brochure so I think this is just a critical step for our guests and I would love to have a lot of community involvement in this process and, get more people with more ideas. And I know Dylan's been created a new Facebook page for the tax force, which I think is unbelievable. It gets people involved. Try to get some engagement going here from the community. And real quick, uh, on the ACDC, and not to speak for Mark, but um, one thing that wasn't brought up is that Mark and I met with Jane yesterday at the library um, at our ACDC meeting on Monday evening. We voted as a board to um, basically be the sponsor or the vehicle for that food trip the TGIF um, we are a nonprofit with liability yeah, insurance, insurance. <laughs> um, and we discussed that with Jane there are obviously as, as most of you probably know some issues with Scott's health that may prevent Val and Scott from participating <coughs> um, Jane may be a little reluctant she seemed to be a little reluctant just to, to take it on obviously by herself with nobody else um, and I mean, unfortunately, I think that most of us are, that are involved in, in everything else are probably pretty taxed um, to organize it, not that we couldn't assist. So if anybody knows anybody that would want to work with Jane to, to help her get it up and running, I think she would appreciate the help. And um, like I said, we, we agreed that we would take that on and, and allow her to, to work under us. It would be a uh, artist community development corporation sponsored function. It's from the so that's what again that's what, what we're, we're intending to do gotcha um you got anything on utilities i'm sure jamie said back there a lot to give you <laughs> just did we i mean you guys have accomplished a lot with yeah that. well the water's water's in it's usable sewers in uh we still got pressure tested but the mains in Electric soaked up, um, they're energized, so if you look around there, there's these lights on, so it's, I wasn't sure we'd get it all done, but we got it done, so. Still got some more to do, but at least that building's hooked up, ready to go. And they still got brush chipped, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. They did a great Thank job. You. Thank you. Jamie, one, one quick question. Did, we can take care of that parking space in front of the library. Not yet. I did talk to Jane about that, though. And we're, if we went we were um, horizontal like she wanted, it'd take up like three spots. So we're just going to do one. And she agreed with that. Okay. So, I'll, I'll, yeah, that's on my list to do. So. <laughs> I know it's a new list. I, I just had to think about it. <clears throat> All right. Uh, please, got anything? No, I wasn't at the last meeting. Or he was there, right? I don't think. A little discussion on maybe paying a little more attention to what you give warning tickets for and what you don't, which didn't seem to stick very well. So aside from that, uh, it was just the discussion on the awards of the two officers. That was it. it was Pretty fast. I mean, you missed a lot of meetings. I missed about a seven-minute meeting. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Randy, the MMS yeah, meeting's not yet new and had an idea with your last month. The only reason I put that on is like getting the fish fries next yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Um, you talked about Scott. Just in, in a, in being around, we, that's, that's another retired fireman. <laughs> you know, I want to relate this health issues that the firemen and EMS just by putting out there for us. I mean, of course, I'm out there with them too, but. That um, some of the guys over the years, you know, the, it, it's changed. Like I said, used to a house burnt down. It took yeah, I'm going to use this as a, a, a white number, 30 minutes to take off. Now it's three minutes, you know, because of all the stuff that the houses are made out of. The burn so much, and the carcinogens are so much worse. That's why the PPE is so important in these washers that we keep talking about and everything. But yeah, that's six people that's been in the fire service in the last 10 years that have come down with terminal illness. And I'm not saying that's the, the prime cause, it sure <coughs> didn't, didn't hurt. Um, everything else is going good. Um, I keep sprayed with fire department. Do what? I keep sprayed with two fluids. Oh man, <laughs> uh, the building is really holding up well after this last renovation. Thank goodness for that. So other than that, I think we're doing good. So claims. The total docket for May 2nd is $285,088.92. The top five claims are as follows. Claim number 539 for IMPA at $139,810.66. Claim number two is payroll number eight at $34,980.10. Claim number three is Anthem at $22,584.86. Claim number four at Republic Services for $12,296.52. And claim number five at $523 for, or I'm sorry, claim number 523 for the Argus Kip Kickoff Festival for $10,000. <laughs> And the top five claims total $219,672.14 and represent 77% of the total docket. I just have one question. Claim number 512, perfect correction to June 2013. Yes, when we did our audit, we um, had six things that were left at the bottom of the bank statement. Some of them were checks and some of them were perp claims from my predecessor. Um, the perp is not paid every payroll like it is now. It's not a bad thing, but um, it, there were outstanding amounts that were at the bottom of our bank statement. Our auditors wanted us to get rid of them. So Candy spent probably a good part of last week going through and talking to PERP and trying to retrack all these payments. Um, that payment was paid in June. It was um, a makeup payment for something and it was never reported, which is why it was outstanding. So we had to go back and put it back, you know, as a recorded payment in the books. Just curious. So now our bank statement should be clear of anything over two years old. Out. No, it's fine. I have one question not related to claims, so. though. Randy, did you find me anybody to water my flowers? I've been talking <laughs> to some people. <laughs> the answer as of right now is no. Thank God just get the water. All I need to is transporting <laughs> yeah. the water. And, and I understand that. And fire trucks. Yeah, we have a fire truck. It <laughs> just didn't mean really getting a fireman to do it, so. Well, if, if we had this job, I, I don't. No one I talked to that four yeah. wheeler. I thought well, of mounting a you know a barrel with a tap on it and mm -hmm. it'd be easy to drive around, but right now I can't find anybody that's willing to use their four wheeler. Okay. And so but transporting the water and I'm, I'm not giving up, it's just okay. I've got to come up with another plan. So give me You want a pickup? Do I own one? Yeah, I don't buy one. 
I was supposed to go look at one today, didn't have time, so yeah. First part. <laughs> well, you know, and I, I was just going to yeah. say, at the risk of, of opening my mouth, I mean, we, we have revised this summer um, how we're doing the employee in the park. We actually got the full-time employee, then we'll have two part-time employees. One is going to be actually, I believe it's going to be John Vanderbilt's son, Jacob. Uh, or uh, Lucas, I mean. Uh, yeah. um, Lucas, and then uh, we did hire Kenny Nightfall as the another part-timer to work in the, in the park. So, I mean, if it becomes an issue, I mean, let me know. I can see if I can work something out. And the first thing they can do every day when they start out is just, I mean, it can't take them that long to do it. Well, yeah, they, you know, if we could get somebody to with a truck and, and, and the water, like you said, watering them is not the hard part. It's just transporting the water and yep. coming here and filling it up, taking it down here. But like I said, if, if you if you don't find someone, okay. you know, please let me know and, and I, I will arrange that. that there you go, happen. Lisa. We're working on it. All right. I'm just asking. Well, so. that's great. Okay. I make okay. a motion. We accept claims by the name of the president. I apologize. There's a motion to second on claims. I'm going to favor the second by the second. Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Jamie, when do you want to get together on that colonial? It's not a public. You can point blank. We can do it at the next meeting. Okay, but uh, we have an exact session before the next meeting. I, I think it will take 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, to we can save us. Cemetery meeting at 7:15. Because Jerry said he needed a half an hour, so 6:30 to 7:15. That works. 7 o'clock would be for Jamie as a workshop. Yep. That works. Okay. Anyone have anything else? George. Mark Vanderbilt. I just wanted on the record. I made it one meeting and didn't ask for a dime. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.